Welcome to Retro Upgrade. This time we'll be doing some practical 3D printing. We will be making a missing component for my tripod. Usually the 3D printed is considered as a toy, mainly used for printing trinkets and toys. But with the right settings, you can actually make usable spare parts. As you can see on the hub, I'm using a bolt with some washers to hold it in place but it unscrews itself after a while so it's really annoying having a wrench at hand all the time it came with nothing at all there when I bought it on the in the flea market a few years ago this works pretty well but because of the washers being separate from the screw it's not very reliable as you can see without the screw it just falls down it can't hold any weight at all looking at the design of this it, there is the central hub that's fixed and then the plastic hub around it moves so if we do a friction knob we could fix this so i mean fitting a bolt inside a 3d printed housing that screws in with the bolt okay so the most important dimension is the outside dimension of the housing it's 39.4 millimeters and the inner hole must be cleared at least 16.5 millimeters okay it's time to design something in fusion Okay, so let's make the outer diameter first. It's 39.4. And let's make the inner one 16.5. I'm making the actual hub to have as a reference. This part will not be printed, but it's good to have so you know what you're working to fit it to. I made it four millimeters wide. Now I'm making the actual part I'm going to print. So I'm measuring the bolt tip or the shaft is 5.85. If you want, you can do this hole a little bigger, but if it's too loose, uh, the bolt can flop around inside. Now I'm just extruding a bit so I have some meat on the 3d print I'm choosing to make a new component so it's an it's completely separate from the first part we designed I'm hiding the other part now because I don't need to use it anymore the interface has been designed already As you can see, there's a new component in the list. And under that component, the body is present. And this is the old body we used as reference. We just click the eye icon to hide it. Now I'm going to choose the polygon tool to make the bolt head. There are two different types. I usually measure from flat surface to flat surface and then the bolt. So I use the top one. Let's see. Uh, there we go. The top one here. If you use the other one, you have to measure from point to point on the bolt instead. And it's harder. Now, considering the program uses a measurement from the center to one of the sides, you have to divide the measurement you get by two. I'll show shortly why. So I put in the measurement I get divided by two. Fusion is smart enough to do math. As you can see, the small line that shows the width, it, it's only from the center to the side. Now I'm going to extrude again, but only the part that's not the bolt. This is so the bolt can fall in and get stuck. Now the height of the bolt is four millimeters. So let's do that. It's 3.8, but it's the nearest 
fixed value. Okay, so we have a little pocket for a bolt, so it can get trapped in. I'm going to push it down a little bit because it was too thick, so I wanted it don't need that much meat on the 3D print. Just a little under. I'm selecting the faces for the bolt pocket to make a bolt head. And I chose to make it as a new component. Now I'm choosing the, to select the bottom side to make the shaft of the bolt. So it's 5.8 millimeter. I'm selecting it for extrusion. I press the extrude button and just uh, pull it out a random amount. I didn't measure this because it doesn't matter. As you can see, it made a bolt inside that's separate from the 3D print. And you can get yourself an idea of how this will work. I'll use the bolt top surface to make a lid for it later. So it matches up perfectly. This is a good way to visualize if you make the part that you're not printing, but is going to interface with it. Now I chose a center rectangle, clicked on the middle and just stretched out. So I have something to grab onto to spin it around uh, like a knob head of a oven knob. So I just select the two parts and stretch it up as you can see i left out the bolt pattern so i can slide it in i put in nine millimeters now but i changed it to 10 later so i have little little more to grab onto i am starting to clean up the 3d print by putting a chamfer to make it nicer that's all this is not necessary but it reduces print time because it's less to print and uh, it looks nicer. I also use a fillet just to smooth out. If you get an error, just pull it back and uh, just adjust from there. Okay, now I'm choosing the four corners, outside corners of the actual knob just to make it not that sharp so you don't cut yourself when you're spinning it you're going to use quite a bit of force when you're using it so the four outside corners at the edges you use control click to just select them and now i'm using a fillet to make it nice and rounded I will also fill it the uh, top surface. Uh, it's just uh, to make it nicer. This is not necessary at all. As you can see, I'm choosing the flat sides on the side. And just pull it in a little bit. I don't measure anything here. I just put it in. This feature is quite small and barely noticeable on the 3D print. You have to keep in mind this is a lot smaller than it is on screen okay time to make the little lid that keeps the bolt in so it doesn't slide out when you unscrew it I select the component that is the bolt head the top side and then create a new component and then I extrude from that component a new component so it's going to make a lid I'm choosing two objects so it makes a perfect height plug exactly to the top of the knob. So I'm going to fill it the corners here to match the ones that are already there. There we go. That looks actually perfect. 
looks like a knob you can slide that piece in there is one more thing you need to do is put in some clearance for the 3d printer it's not perfect so you it's going to mess up a little bit with the size so i usually give it 0 0.2 millimeters i use the push pull tool and put in zero minus 0 0.2 on all surfaces that are going to interface with something else that's 3d printed or manufactured i forgot these two so i'll do it afterwards minus 0 0.2 and there is one more surface that's going to match up with the, the bolt. That's the hole underneath. So we need to put in, as you can see, there's a small, small gap in between, but because of the 3D printers, uh, let's say tolerance issues, you have to do this. It depends on your 3D printer. If you have a enterprise class 3D printer, you don't need to do this. They are perfect from the start. Or if you have a resin printer, that's the same. Now let's see, looks good from all sides, so it's time to print. Let's just save this, you need to go to utilities, then make, and you have the 3D print menu there. Okay, you have to choose the actual model on the side, the component, and then you can hide the other components to make sure you just get that component alone to print. You hide it with a small eye icon. As you can see, I'm selecting the plug and uh, deselecting the action knob and now saving that as well. I usually save them in folders so I don't mess up which file is for which print. Now into Cura, just drag in your new 3D file. I usually move away small objects like this so they don't get a lot of stringing. I've tried to set up my 3D printer as good as I can, but sometimes you get stringing anyway. I'm using 0.2 layer height. sits outside layers to make it really tough 15 percent infill and i'm printing 60 millimeters a second and no supports i designed it on purpose that way as you can see it's quite thick all the mating surfaces are really thick the plug is essentially fully filled this will take 38 minutes and it consumes about 8 grams of material so not much and this does work really good i usually print with the printer connected directly to the computer otherwise you would choose on the drop down menu to save to a sd card and put it in your 3d printer doesn't matter really but i usually have the the printer always connected to the computer so it doesn't matter for my case this is sped up a lot this takes about 10 times longer to make the 3d printer heat up sorry for the bad camera angle i was using the bad tripod I had to prop it up with some stuff because i was fixing it with the bolt i was using I'll speed up this part. It's going to be 10x and some cuts in between just to make it shorter. 38 minutes, even at 10 times speed, is a really long time. But it gives you an idea of time base. If you make the parts thicker, you're using more plastic and it takes a lot longer. But uh, the movement of a 3D printer, especially a Delta one, is mesmerizing. It uh, uses three arms to move the head in 3D space. As you can see here, there is a little stringing in between the parts, but not a lot. If you put them exactly close to each other, you get a row of strings. Time for some cleanup work. I have a set of files 
the really cheap ones and have one good file i usually use that one what you hear in the background is my daughter's game she's playing some uh, games on the tablet if this bothers you let me know in the comments you can see some small components to the left side that's the indication of my next video i'm waiting for spare parts for that they are Dreamcast components the power supply died on two of them this takes a while to do uh, usually when you print on the bed the bottommost layers are spread out so it's a little thicker than it should be on the design it's called elephant foot so let's say the 3d print head is too close to the bed and it squishes out a little bit that's what happens so you get a deformation on the first layer so you always have to consider putting a chamfer on the bottom surface if you have a flat surface you want i forgot to do this on my print but uh, a file makes quick work of it i'm trying to get the camera to focus uh, some small pieces i have to remove but that looks good the rounded edge on top is barely visible it took me a few tries to get it right see as you can see it fits quite nicely you have to put in some force that's why i put in the tolerance because if i didn't do that you would have a hell of a time trying to push it in now I'll try it. let's let's remove the bolt from the tripod as you can see i'm using a way overkill wrench for this i couldn't find the small one that's why i want to fix this so i don't have to have the wrench at hand I can do this manually with my fingers okay so the bolt is out let's remove the tripod I don't need the washers anymore okay let's see how this fits fits quite well it goes in without any issues that's a really snug fit and looks really nice but you can see why i made the lid if you unscrew it it could pop out easily so the lid is there to prevent it from pop out by itself it could if you put too much force on it when you're pulling it out As you can see i'm having some issues using my only my finger but that's because i'm not pull pushing straight down so it gets a lot harder There's a little small piece that's out, so I'm going to push it against the table. She's very curious, she wants to know what I'm doing. It's time to try it out. She's very chatty today. you can see this looks good and works pretty well actually it's quite stiff with a lot less pressure than I needed to put it uh, put on it before it's a cohesive piece so it's not separate pieces that are trying to bind something okay, so I put up the tripod to test it with some weight on so you can see it just flops around without it which is actually worthless as a tripod he wants to fix stuff too i'm going to teach her as soon as she's old enough as you can see it's really stiff when you yeah she has stole one of my screwdrivers she came back with it
That's an annoying melody from her game. This is a Nikon D3100. That's what I use to record some of my footage. It's really heavy actually, so... The indication that it holds well at that angle is perfect. I usually don't have that extreme of an angle. So this is fake now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like. And uh, thank you to all the new subscribers lately. I'm still waiting for the spare parts for the gaming repair videos. Sorry for the delay. Thank you. Bye.